speak about test injuries application. But well, um, I am Roberto Poli. I work in Partech, that is an uh, Italian IT security uh, and uh, cloud company. Uh, we w I work on uh, designing secure, resilient infrastructure based on uh, cloud platform, and I spent the last five years working for the Italian digital department, digital transformation department. So uh, this is a tale of a daily experience where Python saved the day, doesn't promote any best practice, something that works and can save your day too. So at first we will start telling why testing application written in foreign languages, and uh, essentially because uh, Python is a very good testing glue. We will see then how to test Java code, how to test C code, and finally, um, well, conclusions. So, not a deep dive on C types, foreign uh, function interface, JPipe, not suggesting to replace native testing with Python. So, um, we don't live anyway in a perfect world, and so in our life we might need to reduce technical depth, and we have no strategic advantage in writing C code, for example, or we are running out of C developers. Maybe we want to migrate an application, and we need to ensure that functionalities are preserved during the migration. And the test case that we write in Python can be reused after the migration. Or we want to consolidate integration tests when application are tests only in isolation. So Java application with Java tests, C application with C tests, and we don't have integration tests or integration tests are low. We have network, we have latencies, we, are, we have C application that uh, go in segmentation faults or they require infrastructural setups. So shortly, we can test foreign application with Python to reliably evolve service without spending a lot of money. Uh, we can write by the test, we can write them faster, run them faster, and uh, share uh, the work of Q&A with more people since uh, C developers are really uh, running out. So when it came to cost effectiveness, Python is great. We have a lot of framework for generating and managing test data. We have network libraries baked in, in the Python standard library, and it is very easy to execute foreign code thanks to libraries like C-types, uh, JPipe, and CFFI. So these slides shows a Python test that generates data and pass them to C function. Uh, everything uh, that is important here is that all, all happens inside a, the Python test process. We have no network communication going in and out, and this practice allows us uh, to test single part of a complete application. This is faster and more flexible. For example, we can use Python tools to generate HTTP requests, pack them as bytes, and send them to a function that is a, a C function that is compiled. Uh, we can even store test output to create more test cases. So uh, we can then apply this logic of calling for a function from Python to different code segments and generate test data for each step. So I uh, feed the Java function with test data, then I cherry pick uh, the Java function I want to test and spawn this uh, generated test data to other function. And uh, what I found that uh, speeds up testing is that you can skip network interaction in many cases. So let's test how to test Java code. This is quite simple. We just need to install JPipe 1. Uh, clearly, we need a Java virtual machine installed. I set up the virtual machine, uh, import the classes, okay? And then 
The those three, uh, those four lines are simply Java code without uh, semicolons, actually, and braces. Uh, well, that's straightforward. So here we're running a real test. We, I like PyTest, so we can use fixture. Uh, it's simply set up a JVM. We can pass our uh, Java options. We can set up the class path. The nice thing here is that I can iterate with different Java options to test, for example, if my uh, Java function function uh, um, works correctly, even if I change the time zone, for example, or if I don't set the time zone, I uh, um, add the Java classes I want to, uh, to test. And then I run the test, that, that's the yield stuff, we'll see in, in a moment, and then shut down the JVM. Now run the test. As you can see, I get the Java class, and I invoke the to lowercase method and check that works. It actually executes Java bytecode. So um, JPAP allows us to uh, automatically import Java classes, but well, tools may complain, I sort can remove one line, and uh, PyFlakes can uh, complain because, well, Java Lang is not a package. Yeah, it's not a package, <laughs> it's just a workaround, but it's faster to write code, and we could even delegate writing uh, Python tests for Java application to Java developers. So this snippet shows how to test uh, the um, Guava is a Google Java library. Um, there is this uh, init address class that validates IP addresses. I feed uh, the test class, the, the test fun function with all the fixtures. Then I load the Java class and check whether it is valid. Uh, well, the nice thing here is that JPipe allows passing Python strings that's the one we, we have uh, in feed by PyTest. To a Java method that takes a Java lang string um, input. But this is not always the case. For example, uh, if we use the big decimal class, that is a class that uh, implements uh, precision, uh, very precision numbers in Java. I have a Python float. Uh, I instantiate a Java object that is a big de decimal. But if I want to add a big decimal number to a Java uh, object, I cannot pass a Python uh, float. I need to instantiate a Java object, and then it will work. And this is generally the correct thing to do. But again, uh, it's very easy and allows uh, you to delegate writing uh, tasks to, to other people. And it works even interactively if you have IPython. So uh, it's just like having a RAPL Java um, an RAPL uh, in Java. So, testing C code, it's a bit more complex. I don't go very deep on, on this part, but, mm, uh, well, if it's not clear, you can uh, reach out to me. So, the, the re real uh, part here is that uh, we, may uh, want to offload C developers. So there are C applications, maybe uh, you haven't run it uh, and you need to maintain a C application that have been written by other folks uh, and uh, you don't have that ma many C developers and so you can write tests in Python. You may, uh, you may not want to write legacy C code because that application is legacy and you don't want to continue maintaining it. And there are some cases where that makes sense, but it may not always make sense. 
Or maybe you want to test some C library and you don't know how it works and you want to play with it. And that's a good way to do because you can do it with IPython. And another use case is troubleshooting errors in isolated function calls. Because when you run a C application, if you just make an end-to-end -end test, you send stuff through to a socket and you get stuff uh, on the other side, always through a socket, for example. And uh, it's very hard to identify a small function inside that C application that you want to test, but this allows you uh, to do it. For example, you have segmentation faults, and this means that you need to start or write tests in C. You can isolate, isolate the functions and then uh, try to uh, co fix the code without continuously restarts. So imagine, uh, well, this is a very simple uh, C uh, file. Imagine we want to test the parts person C function. It takes a semicolon separated string and puts the value in a person structure, just like that. Uh, to access the function from Python, we need to create a shared library first. Uh, this is done compiling the file with a position independent code flag and then linking it as a shared library. So that is the function, we have a struct we have to compile with the position independent code and create the shared library. Now we can load this uh, function from Python. Note that we have this uh, libx.so uh, shared library. We can use the C type standard library module to load it and access its function through the uh, CDLL class. So, in the le variable, I load the um, shared library. And then before using it, I need to provide to Python all the information that is lost after builds, such as types, the structure, and preprocessor stripped data. And uh, for example, we need to define the person class using the structure class from C types, specifying the fields and their types, just like we did in the C code. Then I can uh, test the function. I pass, pass it a byte uh, sequence. And then with the byref magic, it uh, puts all the information in the person like it was a uh, C structure, okay? Uh, this is uh, a very simple way to test a C function. Uh, another thing I could have passed instead of the person class, a uh, buffer, a C buffer, and then I should have controlled every single byte. So the first bytes were four bytes for the integer, and 20 bytes for, for the name, uh, but Python can do it by itself. And another thing, uh, the function had a lot of bugs, and I can test whether my function is not safe, and this triggers a segmentation fault. But instead testing and debugging it into the all C application that run that function. I can just GDB on Python and going to the right frame, I can see the issue. So line is null and I'm uh, using a scanf on a null. And it's uh, very straightforward and I can, set a, I can debug like that with every single function where I have problem. So real code requires more steps. Uh, here I have a libcjson that is a real library. It has a lot of defines. Those are replaced by the C preprocessor. I have a structure that has self-references, okay? And this needs some tweaks. And 
finally have a function under test that returns a structure and not a simple integer. How can I do it? So uh, uh, in the Python code, I need to provide all the information that are strict, so all the defines. I need to define just a bare class so I can reuse it here and avoid circular references in the CJSON class. Then I load the, uh, the library, point to the function under test, and tell to Python that the uh, response type of that function is a pointer to the CJSON function, to a CJSON structure. Some tweaks clearly, and then I can just use uh, a parameterized test to see how that, wor how that uh, library works. I get uh, the bytes, I pass the bytes to see JSON parse, and I check that the type is correct. So it's always a number. And then, for example, I discovered that I pass an one underline uh, three zeros to uh, the C JSON library, I don't get 1,000 like it happens, for example, uh, in Python, but uh, I get 1.0. So not everything is something uh, behave like we may think. So uh, the benefits. Normally, I would do in an integration test what happens above. I paste data to a C application that goes through, uh, throughout the network, invokes my function, get a result that is passed to a Java application that processes it, and then I validate it. Usually integration tests are written in Python, so data generator and the validator are uh, in Python in my case, but if I run it on uh, inside the, a PyTest, I have everything on Python. Clearly, it doesn't test that network is behaving correctly. It doesn't test everything that is around uh, the log function and the event parts function. But clearly, this is another play. Uh, this is other. Uh, those are other tests that you need to to do. But at first, if the, the test below works, uh, probably. Testing the, with the network is simple. And here we have a simple but complete example. I have an event processor class in Java. I process an event that returns an output string in JSON. And before sending it to C types, uh, I check that uh, the output is correct for Python, or and I can add all the intermediate checks that I want. Then I create a string buffer from this JSON document and uh, pass it, yeah, Java output, it should be JSON document, and pass it to see JSON parse and check that uh, the type is correct. Here I can uh, add other function, make tests more simpler, uh, simple or more complex, but that's the, generally the idea. And well, we are um, almost uh, done. Uh, conclusions. Writing Python tests for Java and C application solves organizational and technical problems. Usually, if you are very good, you can solve technical problems. Uh, it's hard to solve organizational problems. For example, hiring, C developers, or um, in, uh, widening the uh, number of teammates that is able to support uh, the testing work of your team. Uh, so ensure quality even if you're running out of C developers. Reduce the effort of writing C code. Speeding test execution, since when you skip networking and infrastructural setup. You could, for example, 
tag, take one log file, identify the core business chain between Java, C, or other foreign code, and dump all the log through this selected chain and uh, run tests. Uh, for me, I was able to run maybe 1,000 to 5,000 tests in a bunch of seconds. Imagine sending all this stuff in network, applying authentication and so on. Uh, C authentication, Java authentication. You can get rid of it if you want just to test uh, application logic. And well, I think uh, I finished. Have I been fast? <laughs> Really hope that it was clear, and, but if there are some steps that w weren't clear, I can step back to the, to the slides. Okay, thank you, Roberto. So we will probably leave it for Q&A session that we can go back as well. So do we have any questions from the audience? There is a mic in the middle, so please step there. Uh, hello, thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, one thing I was wondering, especially about the part of C code, is that it seems that you have to replicate the types of the C code in the Python code. Do you know if there is any tools that can aid on that? Oh, okay. I saw it coming. So, uh, <laughs> th there are some tools. You can use CFFI for, um, for the scope because it has some ability. If you pass an .h file, he has the ability to extract information from .h file where you have structures and so on. Uh, in my case, it didn't help that much because uh, I had one special use case. Uh, I had to stream. The structure were streamed over network and it weren't aligned to four bytes. But when you use uh, C types or uh, CFFI, uh, uh, in general, uh, compilers align to four bytes structure. Two or four bytes should be four. And you have special directives in C, such as PECT, the PECT directive in GCC that tells uh, the compiler not to pack bytes, uh, to, to pack bytes and don't align to four bytes. Uh, as of now, but this may change, uh, when you generate structure, Python structures from .h file, uh, directives such packed are not respected because they are compiler specific. So my structure uh, were misaligned. Mm. Uh, but probably if there is some Python core developers here <laughs> can share some mm. uh, hints on, on that. But yes, you can use uh, with CFFI .h file. In this case, it was simpler because there, it was just two um, uh, fields. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thanks for your question. Okay, do we have any other questions from the audience? Uh, don't be shy. In the meantime, I will ask one. Is the complex practice or anyone, anyone with a system level kind of knowledge of development can do it easily? Well, my experience is that I was able to delegate writing tests for C application to uh, general system administrators or uh, uh, operation uh, colleagues that had clearly Python knowledge. So once I set up the, the skeleton of the PyTest stuff, they were able to write and improve uh, tests autonomously. And uh, for me, this was a, a great achievement because uh, for uh, that application, uh, 
I was starting to become a bottleneck and offloading stuff to, to other people means you can even get better results because they have more time and they can spend and understand better and so they can contribute the better to, to, to the projects. So this was a real organizational goal of all this stuff. Okay, thank you very much for that. I got, oh, finally a question from the public. Um, hi, thank you for a very nice uh, presentation. Um, I, have you ever had experience with uh, microcontrollers and testing the C code for microcontrollers that you can generate by um, deploying on an agent and complying, um, compiling in there and then doing some testing with Python code on compile? My experience was just playing with my son with Arduino. <laughs> but I think that if the bytecode is compatible, the bytecode you compile on the microcontroller is compatible with uh, the Python version you are using, and if the Python for the microcontroller has the C types support, probably you can do it, or maybe you can make a tool chain to compile your microcontroller code, C code on uh, um, AMD 64 bytes <laughs> bits <laughs> architecture. Mm, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting question because uh, it, it could simplify a lot of stuff, but I never tried. Okay. Thank you. If you do it, let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that was also my prepared question, so that <laughs> goes away. Uh, okay, I can't see any more questions here or online, but I will ask one last. Wouldn't it be better to write the original app directly in Python? Well, that depends. <laughs> Uh, in, in some cases, yes. Uh, for example, uh, we started moving some code from C to Python when we have, uh, for example, uh, network bottlenecks uh, or disk bottlenecks. When there are some specific requirements, uh, it, it's not easy because you have to demonstrate that uh, you are not um, creating something that, that can break in production because Python always works very well in, uh, uh, in prototyping, but in production, I always like to, to test Python application better since I'm a Python advocate. So I uh, prefer to fail fast, but if it's possible not to fail. <laughs> But yes, in some cases, we are migrating. We, we, since there is async IO, we are migrating stuff from C to, uh, to Python. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Big round of applause for Roberto. Thank you.